did you know that losing socks can cost a family of four in upwards of $185 a year? This was according to a study that was done in Britain in 2011 by a company called Dr. Beckman, your laundry specialist. They also discovered that males are predominantly the culprits of losing socks. <laughs> and through their study, they found that 82% of males between the ages of 14 and 25, at least once a week, <coughs> wore that mismatched socks yeah. because of losing them. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, by show of hands, if you have ever taken laundry out of the dryer and been folding it and discovered you were missing a sock, yeah. Adam Toastmaster, Aurora Tours, special guest, and my fellow sock hunters. <laughs> this is a presentation about the sock. Join me and we will explore together this fascinating world. During my presentation, I'll give you some fascinating facts about socks. I'll cover a brief history about the sock, and I'll also cover some health benefits <laughs> that the sock can provide for us. <clears throat> Did you know that the word sock comes from the Latin root socks, which means light, low-heeled shoe? The sock is one of the <coughs> oldest articles of clothing in existence that we still wear today. And as a matter of fact, the sock, the concept of the sock, came even long before the concept of pants. There have been cave paintings discovered in the Stone <laughs> Ages of cavemen wearing socks. Now, they're different than the socks we wear today, of course. Cavemen took animal hair and skins and bound them to their feet because they understood the importance of protecting their feet from the elements. Around 200 AD, it was found that the first fitted socks <coughs> were being developed, where two pieces of material were taken and being sewn together so they fit the foot more appropriately. The longest surviving <coughs> pair of socks that is still in existence today are a pair of knitted socks that were found along the Nile River. And it's believed that between 300 and 500 AD was when socks were first being knitted. A lot of this information came from, again, a survey that was conducted in Britain and was posted on the Daily News, which is a news website. Around the year 1000, things took a turn and socks became really popular. They became a symbol of nobility and of status. And around the 16th century, things got really weird. Outside the gates of London, they had four people that were posted on two different shifts every day. And their job was to conduct surveillance to make sure everybody was wearing the appropriate socks. They were called the sock police. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> the sock police operated under sumptuary law. And Black's Law Dictionary tells us that sumptuary law were laws that were put into place to make sure that nobody was wearing clothing that was out of their status. Now, I spoke earlier about socks and how the cavemen, even cavemen, understood the importance of protecting their feet from the environment. But what other health benefits do socks have? 
Sleep.org tells us that socks can help us sleep. Socks being worn at bedtime can create vasodilation, which is the dilation of the blood vessels. This creates warm feet and helps us sleep easier because it signals the brain it's time to go to bed. Socks can also help people with diabetes. On ortho.org, they tell us that diabetic socks are different from normal socks because they're built, built to fit loosely so they don't constrict the feet. They also have more padding on the bottom of the sock and the bottoms are completely white so that we can tell when people have foot <coughs> So during my presentation, I have covered some interesting facts about socks. I have talked about the brief history of socks, and believe me, there is a whole lot more. <laughs> and I've also covered a few of the health benefits that socks can provide. So in closing, I implore you all, hang on to your socks. It's not that hard. As a matter of fact, it's so easy that even a caveman can do it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>